A huge number of children across the globe play sport. And why wouldn't they? They have a natural energy and fitness that lets them run around and burn calories. It's hard to calculate the many benefits of sport, apart from simply keeping fit. For children, the line between play and sport is blurred. Sport is play. They build friendships and learn teamwork. They derive social skills, self-esteem, discipline and fair play, all through sport. But the news is not all rosy. One of the concerning things about children's sport right now is that for every child that's actively involved in sport, there's another who plays no sport at all. In fact, the news is much worse because of the kids who play no sport, one quarter are unlikely to be involved in any activity whatsoever. And the most exercise they get is a walk to the fridge or changing channel on the TV with the remote control. This problem is worse for girls than boys, particularly during and after puberty. The obesity trends in the USA amongst boys and girls aged 2 to 19 have skyrocketed since the 70s. In fact, in the USA, the percentage of obese children has tripled and now tips the scales at an ominous 15%. If we are to encourage children to participate in sport, we have to make it safe. In the USA, 4.3 million sports and recreational injuries occur annually. Roughly half these are classified as serious injuries. In other words, they're bad enough to present to a doctor's rooms. These figures are a massive cause for concern, and they emphasise the need to encourage children to play sport, to make it safe and above all else, to make it what it was always meant to be, fun. So what are the issues for children in sport? Basically, they're threefold. Psychological, chronological, physiological. One of the important questions every parent, coach and clinician must ask sooner rather than later is, how much is too much? The concern is the sheer volume of sport they play. It's not at all uncommon for children to be playing school, club and representative sport. In other words, up to three or four games per week, plus training. This is a huge load on a child's body and a recipe for disaster. The other big issue is that children have very different decision-making skills and strategies to adults. And risk-taking in sport is a problem especially for boys. This is part of the reason boys get injured more than girls. They have difficulty with the interpretation of reasonable risk. Adults play an enormous role in mentoring children and have a big responsibility to ensure we have realistic expectations of children and the sport they play. This responsibility includes setting positive examples for children who've not yet learnt the concepts of sportsmanship and fair play, and ensuring we don't exert too much pressure on our own children or others to perform. The wrong adult influence can permanently drive a child away from sport, and it's critical we never forget or ignore what children's sport is all about. To have fun, to develop skills, and to derive health benefits from being physically active, which hopefully will last a lifetime. Another key issue to be recognised is that children may have the same chronological age, but very different physiological ages. This is something we can all identify with, seeing a player tower two feet over another. It can be very intimidating and potentially dangerous for a child to be matched in sport against a much bigger, much stronger opponent. It's a problem which to date remains unresolved because most sports are still played by age group, not physiological size. There is, however, a very strong argument to suggest this should be changed, and this may have a significant positive effect on injury statistics, especially in boys, especially around puberty, when there's a huge variation in body size, aggression, and strength. Attend any junior sporting event, and the skill differences from child to child are glaringly obvious. This can be in relation to coordination, or even the level at which the basic understanding of the game is grasped. The physiological differences between adult and child are many, varied and profound. Children have much stronger ligaments, 
fascia and tendons than they do bones. This being the complete opposite to adults, where bones are stronger than ligaments and tendon. This dictates the injury patterns we see in children. True joint sprain and tendon injuries are relatively rare in children because the ligaments and tendons are strong. Rather than suffering a ligamentous injury in relation to a given load, children tend to suffer an avulsion injury. This means a chunk of bone is literally dislodged, where the same injury force in an adult would rupture the ligament. These are common in children, at sites we'd normally see ligamentous injury in an adult. Bone growth is controlled by plates of cartilage sandwiched between bone located at both ends of long bones. These are called growth plates or epiphyses. Bone grows because the cartilage plates generate new bone, lengthening the bone in the process we call growth. The age at which these plates fuse with the main body of the bone is characteristic for different bones, and the eventual fusion of every growth plate signals the end of growth. This is a critical difference between child and adult. Growth plates don't exist in an adult skeleton, so they can't be injured. But children are prone to injury of or around the growth plate. Their immature bones are susceptible to injury, especially at the site of insertion of the Achilles tendon into the calcaneus. This is called Seaver's disease. It can be so painful, they just can't play sport anymore. Seaver's disease is especially worth mentioning because it can be influenced either negatively or positively by footwear. Seaver's disease is prevalent in the jumping and running sports, especially all codes of football. It's probably so common in the football codes because the footwear worn actively contributes to the problem. First, without adequate shock attenuation, the weight-bearing surface of the heel has little or no protection from impact and repetitive stress. This may damage the delicate calcaneal growth plate, which in turn may become inflamed and painful in classic Seaver's disease style. Secondly, the absence of a midsole in this footwear is likely to increase tension within the Achilles tendon, which in turn will exert a traction force on the growth plate. Recent research indicates this may be one of the most important causes of Seaver's disease. We believe all sports should be safe and it should be enjoyable. So naturally, our junior range reflects this commitment. So kids are not little adults. They have different needs, different skills, and different injury patterns. We know about kids, and we care about their ability to develop a lifelong passion for sport in a safe environment, with less pain and more fun.